Alright. Good evening. It's getting toward dark. The sun's peeking through there, so I'm probably getting sun face. It's past the umbrella tilt point, so we do with what we got to do. Getting tired of this COVID-19. I want to shoot some more videos out and away from the house, but it's crazy. This is a new bottle. I don't do this very often open a new bottle usually I get to spend some time trying it first but I decided not to this time I bought it three days ago maybe four it's called Old Tub Kentucky Straight Bourbon Whiskey unfiltered uh, bottled in bond sour mash it's by James Bean 50% alcohol by volume uh, no age statement but we do know it's over four years old as it is bottled and bond same distilling season blah 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 anybody that's into whiskey knows what bottled and bond is if you don't look up bottled and bond act read it you'll know what i'm talking about uh, let's go ahead and get it open it just showed up in our area uh paid 23.99 for it down in the little town of Ark City, Kansas, because I had to go down there and take care of some business, and I stopped at the other two or three little liquor stores, but only the one that's worth really that's any good. I always carry a few things like that, and I've seen it. You like, well, I can get that and try that. Uh, it's worth trying. And of course, even though this review is about Old Tub, I think I've done a bottled and bond Jim Beam. I'll have to relook. I'm not sure. But it begs to be compared to Jim Beam bottled and bond. I mean, really, they're released by the same company. This was only available at the at the at the distillery gift center or store supplied by the distillery in Kentucky for years. And it's just literally got released to the public this year. Uh, this one here has been out for ever in a day. Every once in a while I still run across one of the old original square bottles this was in. I mean, if you're going to make two bottles and two bottled in bonds out of the same distillery, and I don't know the, if the mash, if there's a difference in the mash bill, I did kind of look that up, but I couldn't find nothing, but I didn't do a lot of deep looking, so I'm not going to go there, but it just begs that, you know, how do they compare? <clears throat> but first, let's do this. This is this. I don't do this very often. It's kind of like a first. So let's just try it. Well, we'll read the back real quick. Old Jim Beam's Old Tub is a bottom bond Kentucky straight bourbon whiskey, just like the original Old Tub. It has not been char carbon or chill filtered. Only quality screen to remove bits of barrel wood. It's the next best thing to thieving the barrel yourself. You may notice some haziness when you add ice. Think of it as an indicator of a true full flavor of this bourbon. And I assume this one's filtered. It's been too long. Pre prohibition style, 100 proof. No express and make perfect mixer for American cocktail. For any classic American cocktail. Hard to yeah, this one doesn't say anything about chill filtering or anything like this. So we assume this one's chill, this one's filtered, and this one's not. They must do a good job because I spent a lot of time when I first bought it looking to see if I could see bits floating around. I didn't see nothing. So, but that can vary too. If the if they use a settling tank, which I'm sure they do after they dump the barrels, they dump, and it's not a single barrel by any means. But they dump all the barrels into a settling tank. The settling tank does its job. It lets some of the wood filtering, some of the wood carbon and stuff in there settle out. Then they bottle off of that. So you would only probably be getting any sediment if your bottle came from toward the bottom of the settling tank. That's neither here nor there. Anyway. Let's get to it. Oh, better get the color. 
because it's been raining here and it's warmed back up, the humidity is clinging to everything since I brought these out of the house. I didn't close that door. But we got decent legs. They developed here, run pretty fast though. They're not great, but they fairly good legs. I'll let you see the bottle because anybody, but a lot of people's already reviewing it. It's out. It's, I'm not the only one doing this by any means. Color's a medium amber. There's the train again, thank God. Oh, I'll cut this right here. Okay, I'm back now. Still hear the train rattling in the distance, don't hear the horn no more. I did let a train go through before I started this. They are running a lot more trains now, I've noticed, the last couple of weeks. So maybe things are starting to move back to normal a little bit. I don't know. A lot more trains are moving. Wood, black pepper, touch of corn, The sweetness in here, but it's not a caramel. Or... It's more like an ever so slight herbal sweetness. It's got a herbal note, light herbal note to it. <clears throat> and that sweetness is just kind of laying in there like a like a sugary granular sweetness setting behind that slightly herbal note in the nose. It's light, it's not very dominant. Most of you getting wood, most of it you're getting black pepper. Just a touch of nutmeg. And I mean just a touch. There is a herbal note to it though. That's not bad, it's just slightly there. Huh. Cheers. Very drying. Mmm. Very drying on the palate. There is a very comfortable oak note here. That black pepper is very persuasive. The corn is there. That slight herbal note comes across as a very faint fennel note. Now we're not thinking black licorice and the hard notes off of anise or star anise or any of this stuff. Just ever so slight a fennel in there. And that means slight. I mean, you don't have to hunt it. It's there. But it's mostly there in the finish. The sweetness is there. It's more, it's just more of just a generalized sugar sweetness. I'm not getting caramel. Not getting brown sugar for me anyway. Just a just ever so much a slight touch of sweetness in there from just regular white sugar. That's, that's, that's what it's coming across to me as. This is good. This is good. I'm enjoying first first impressions. It's it's worth the twenty three ninety nine. Tell you that right now.
Mm. Now I like black pepper and stuff. This works out very well for that. And I like the oak note. It's got a good oak note behind it. It's not, not harsh, not brutal. It's just a nice, even, metered oak note. Mm. I'm impressed. Now, I'm not going to totally review this. I'm just going to look at comparisons between the two because some inquiring minds may want to know. Oh, here comes, here comes the white dog sugar. Oh, totally different nose. More sweet on this one. Definitely skewing to a brown sugar on this one. More spicy. More spicy, more sweet on the nose initially. Definitive. For me anyway. Mm. I notice more of an acetone note on this one. I don't get much acetone on this one for me. It's not really strong. This one does give me the a very brown sugar acetone note. And it's wood and phenolic tannic. Brown sugar still there. More of a definite nutmeg to me than cinnamon. Others may disagree. And to me, it's more nutmeg than cinnamon. Just slightly harsher than this one. This one is more spicy. And let's not judge harshness based on spiciness. Because some people, the, the spiciness is going to be a more harsh, a more, it's going to come across more harshly. And this is more spicy. This comes across more on the acetone side. You're getting a little bit more harshness from that acetone, which is a little bit more prevalent in this one. Even though this one's sweeter, and, and the definitive sweetness than this one. Whoa. Ooh, they engaged my. Hmm. It's just slightly more. It has a lack of finish in it. That this one seems to have more of a finish in it, believe it or not, for me. Uh, right now, setting here side by side, which one do I prefer? I think, knowing what they are and how they come across, I prefer this one. It's not that I never did dislike this one, but I do prefer this one to this one. And I'm preferring the spiciness over the lack of spiciness. There's even a little bit of chili in this one. A little bit of that. Oh, like an Anko chili powder. Just a faint, but a little chili note to it. This one skews more of the sweet, and it's got some nutmeg in it. But the acetone character and the wood, the wood and the acetone and the tannicness kind of makes this one a little more off-putting than this one to me. That's what I get. Uh, Score-wise, I'm not going to score this one because I don't remember my old score. I'm not even going to look it up right now. I'm sure I've done it in the past. You can look it up yourself. If I have not, I'll check my uh, I'll check my uh, scores and I'll put the score right here. This one here for score-wise, though, you know, I kind of like it. Do I think it's best? But for no, but for twenty-three ninety-nine, do I think it's good? Yes, I think it's rather good for twenty-three ninety-nine. Uh, 
I'm gonna give it an 87. I think an 87. An 88 maybe, but right now more of an 87. Uh, it'll be interesting to see how it opens up a little bit more as it ages. It may get better, more rounded, it may not. I find with these bourbons, especially bottle and bond, I tend not to see a lot of change over time. That's why I'm not too scared of opening it up and just taking the neck pour off of this one. Uh, for some reason, they just... And, and I, this may prove me wrong. I might try it six weeks from now. I'm going to be going, wow, okay, there is a definitive difference. But right now, it's not something I'm noticing. Anyway, I better wrap this up. It's went on long enough. Remember, the spirit in your glass ain't running from you. Take your time, sip it, and enjoy it. You'll be better for it, as will we all. Everyone, have a good evening. That's a winner.